If what you want in your next smartphone is something a little different, well, 2017 is going to be a really good year for you. On the flagship side, this year LG is leading the principal charge for an Android alternative to Samsung, but it's discarded last year's compromises and gimmicks for a return to the fundamentals, a renewed focus on quality, and a camera I'm dearly going to miss when I have to move on. I'm Mr. Mobile, and this is the LG G6 Review, brought to you by MintSim. The G6 has the best hand feel of any LG phone I've used. The chromed out plastic and strange paint jobs of previous models have been replaced by glass and aluminum construction that gleams like metal in the platinum version and gives the black trim a liquid allure that's gorgeous, as long as you keep a chamois handy. Harkening back to 2012's Optimus G, the G6 feels heavier than it actually is, and LG's refusal to taper the edges makes it seem thicker, too. This is a welcome change of pace. The result is a phone that's easy to hold and reassuringly tank-like, and backing up that hand feel is IP68 dust and water resistance, as well as protection against temperature extremes and mechanical shock. None of this is to say that you should go around smacking your phone into parking lot puddles, and the Gorilla Glass 5 backplate does indeed get scratched in such situations, but it should handle abuse better than its immediate predecessor. Of course, if you want a real beast, there's the all-metal V20, but the G-Series is made to appeal to a broader audience, and the G6 does a great job of feeling both accessible and exceptional. That also applies to the screen. It's 5.7 inches, but, well, so is this one. I'll give you one guess as to which is easier to use one-handed. The 2 to 1 aspect ratio means you can symmetrically stack two apps at a time, or watch fancy new shows in the hip 18x9 format. At press time, Netflix and Google Play movies each allow true full-screen scaling on the G6, but YouTube does not, so you're still going to get letterboxing or pillarboxing with some videos. For me, the more exciting bit is the ergonomic win. Because of the stretched screen, the phone can display more while staying easy to use, and LG has a couple nice software tricks to make that one-handed use even easier. The screen is HDR ready, and when it's not being used, you have the option of a persistent clock or signature, and notifications will show up here too. That said, if you use that ambient display, the backlight will be working at least a little bit all the time. That might account for some of the middling battery life I've seen from my G6. I can usually make it through the day, but sometimes it's a stretch, unless I periodically top it up. Oh hey look, wireless charging is back! Hooray! The early software I'm using could be responsible for some of that power drain, too. This is Android 7.0. When the G6 comes to the US, it'll offer 7.1 and no doubt some polishing of the LG UI. But even in its current state, it's less obtrusive and more responsive than any LG skin that's come before. I installed Nova Launcher after a week just to spiff up the look and feel, and the G6 runs it well, despite a spec sheet some are calling disappointing. We'll come to that in a second, though, because first, I really, I just have to show you the cameras. If you follow the Mr. Mobile on Instagram or Facebook, you already know how enamored I am of this array, which uses one camera for standard pics and one for wide-angle shots. What does this mean for you? No more backing up to get everyone in the frame. No more holding your phone above your head to cram in all your lunch. For all these photo pairs you're seeing, I took both pictures from the same exact position. Often I'll shoot with the wide lens even when I don't need it, just for that added dramatic effect. Now there are disadvantages to going wide all the time, as with most of these lenses you get a pronounced fisheye effect that distorts the edges. Also there's no optical stabilization on the wide side as there is with the standard lens, and the aperture is smaller as well, which means it's not as good for night shots. And the front-facing camera gets so grainy in dim settings as to be pretty distracting. But low light is still a challenge for most smartphones. Anyone remember my first nighttime walkabout with the Pixel? And really, it's all a balancing act, isn't it? The question is, does the G6 camera bring enough capability to forgive its shortcomings? And the answer for me is an unqualified yes. 
Of all the things I'll miss when I move on from the G6, the camera tops the list. For all that the G6 gets right, it doesn't check all the boxes for some power users. For them, a 2016 processor in a 2017 flagship is anathema, while two-generation-old Gorilla Glass on the front and a lackluster single-edge speaker scream cost-cutting. Adding insult to injury, this is the first G-Series flagship since 2013 with a non-removable battery. And while phone calls are handled with LG's usual aplomb, audiophiles will be unhappy to learn that the premium DAC shipping in overseas models won't come to U.S. shores. Whether these shortcomings are worth dwelling on will depend on your priorities. And, of course, what the U.S. pricing turns out to be. No word on that yet from LG. But even if that price scrapes the stratosphere, the G6 has a lot going for it. During my two weeks with it, I never thought, boy, I wish I had a Snapdragon 835. Because the 821 is more than capable of handling anything I can imagine wanting to run on my phone for the next year. I also never said, I wish this camera was better, because it does stuff no other smartphone camera can do. About the only thing that gives me pause is the software situation. LG is not so great at keeping up with Android updates, but then again, you can say the same of many manufacturers. So for me, the G6 hits a lot more than it misses. I'm comfortable recommending it to anyone looking for a compelling alternative to Samsung on the high end, or a smartphone camera unlike any other. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, check out this week's sponsor. Mint Sim is the new way to get high-speed LTE in the United States. Head over to MintSim.com and use the discount codes in the description for premium quality service on a premium quality network for a fraction of the price. Until next time, everyone, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.